Drama is erupting once again in the alternative media, independent media, and conservative media spaces. Jeremy Hambly of The Quartering and Matt Walsh are currently exchanging quips at each other on Twitter. And Matt Walsh has directly responded to a statement from me, one of my videos, as well as several other creators, including Jeremy Hambly. And this is an important conversation pertaining to gender ideology and how we push back on what we all agree with as being detrimental and negative. So there's a few there's a few things you need to understand about the conversation between the Daily Wires, Matt Walsh, I, Jeremy Hambly, etc. in this context. It all begins with Dylan Mulvaney. If you're not familiar, Dylan Mulvaney is an individual who is tracking the days of girlhood. That is to say, Dylan Mulvaney says, today is day X of being a girl. Dylan Mulvaney, of course, is a biological male who recently underwent facial feminization surgery, producing a video saying that they were very hot. Matt Walsh responded to this video with a couple minutes uh, a statement directly to Dylan Mulvaney, in which he said things like, you are not attractive, you are not female, you've gotten rid of the only things that could be considered masculine, but you have not increased uh, your level of femininity. In fact, you are just eerie and things of that nature. Now, I, along with many people, responded by saying that Matt Walsh was being mean. Now, I, I, I want to respond to Matt Walsh's statement here, but the bigger picture is what we have seen in our society and our culture is an expansion of gender ideology, which has had very negative consequences on many young people. There are what we refer to as detransitioners who are coming out saying, I was pressured into this, I was confused, and I have destroyed my life. Please don't do it to other people. And I think as it pertains to Dylan Mulvaney, there are a few things need to be said before we play the response from Matt Walsh and talk about what the real issue here at hand is, a conversation on how we win the culture war. Dylan Mulvaney, in my opinion, is not transgender. I've had a lot of people say that Dylan is, of course, trans, and perhaps maybe I'm saying this. There are people who are suffering from gender dysphoria, meaning they look in the mirror and they see something that doesn't make sense to them. They don't, they don't feel like they're in the right body. Then there are people who are, I guess you'd call it autophilic, autoandrophilic, and autogynophilic. In the book Gender Queer, the individual Maya Kobabe explains how she is an autoandrophile, meaning she is sexually aroused at the thought of being male. Thus, this whole gender ideology thing is seemingly a fetish that excites the individual. The same is true for what they refer to as autogynophilia. There are people now accused, uh, Leah Thomas, for instance, who is swimming in the women's swim team. There is a big Twitter thread explaining how this individual seems to be more so experiencing a fetish and not dysphoria. There are different reasons people get surgery and manipulate their bodies, often uh, removing healthy body parts. And it's not just because someone is suffering from the mental disorder known as dysphoria as listed in the DSM-5. There are other reasons. I believe Dylan Mulvaney is a narcissistic, uh, is a narcissist who is using a popular trend for clicks and for traffic, and they're willing to do whatever it takes. I believe this individual is not trans, uh, nor a woman or anything of that nature, because of the way Dylan Mulvaney insults trans people and women. I think it's more of a performative action to generate traffic. And yes, that's even resulting in surgery because the individual is trying to do whatever it takes. Celebrities get plastic surgery all the time. Madonna did. We assume, we believe, as she said it. And thus, when you look at this, the famous video of Dylan Mulvaney wearing hiking heels. Okay, women and trans women don't do that. That is not a thing they do. It is a performative insult to generate traffic, I believe. We've seen this with many individuals in the grift. They will say things intentionally trying to trigger the other political side or tribe in an effort to generate attention. If I make a video that is fairly inoffensive, but expresses my opinion, say on Dylan Mulvaney or Matt Walsh, the left won't talk about me. And then you end up with, say, 100 people. You have 50 on the left, 50 on the right. I know it doesn't break down that way, but let's just hypothetically. If 50 people on the right uh, are talking about me, I'm only getting 50% of the potential audience. If I can convince the left to talk about me, which will trigger the right to talking about me, now I've got 100% of the audience. I believe that is what Dylan Mulvaney does. Making videos which will intentionally trigger the right, which will instantly trigger a leftist defensive reaction. Thus, I think Dylan Mulvaney is, a Mulvaney is a dangerous person who is insulting and mocking trans people and causing very serious problems. Now, Matt Walsh made his statement. I would like to play for you Matt Walsh's response. The context that you need to understand 
Matt is explaining how he feels we win the culture war. And I think the reason this level of drama is happening, I don't think it's drama. There's a conversation happening. I think it's happening because we need to have that conversation and uh, we need to sit down and discuss these ideas and figure out how do we move forward. Now, Matt Walsh was criticized by trigonometry, by Amala Ekbenobi of PragerU, Jeremy Hambly. And, you know, I got to say this very lightly because Matt does include my video. All I said was Matt could get his point across without being so mean. But I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure my, what I said was he's allowed to be mean. He's allowed to say what he wants. He has free speech and all that stuff. It's not something I would do. But uh, I'm, I'm not mad at Matt for being mean. I mean, I just want to make sure that's clear. Let's play this, and then we'll talk about what it means to be mean in the culture war and why we, why we have our opinions. Okay, so that was uh, Tim Pool, Jeremy from the YouTube channel The Quartering, Sydney Watson, Amala Ekpanobi from PragerU, Prager U, and the guys from the podcast Trigonometry. Now, one thing I want to be clear about here is that I'm not mad Situation. at any of these people. There are no hard feelings. We can disagree and all that. It's fine. I could have done without the snideness and the lame cheap shot from the trigonometry guys at the end, especially in the video that. where they're supposed to be lecturing me about the value of taking the high road. Okay, when you're going to do that, you can't start the video by insulting me. But we'll leave that uh, to the side for now. Instead, all I'd like to do is address the overarching criticism one last time. First, you'll notice the connecting thread. Okay, they all agree that I'm right, that what I said is factually correct. That's true. Every single person who was like, Matt's being a little mean, literally said he's completely right about this. Now, I disagree with him to a certain degree. I, my concern with the Dylan Mulvaney stuff is that many conservatives are acting like Dylan Mulvaney represents all trans people. I think Dylan Mulvaney represents the narcissistic internet personality disorder that exists. There are women who get plastic surgery so that they can get a million followers. There are men who get plastic surgery and implants so they can also get followers. Dylan Mulvaney is just another narcissist getting plastic surgery to get followers. I do not believe Dylan Mulvaney is gender dysphoric. I think that it goes too far by saying it out loud. Mulvaney. I disagree. I do not believe that Matt Walsh went too far. And he even shows the clip. I said he could get the point across without being mean. I'm not saying he shouldn't be mean. I want to make sure that's clear. He's the one running around like some cartoon of a woman passing out tampons in the women's room and meeting with the president to defend the mutilation of children. But I went too far. Well, see, this is where we differ. Because in the culture war, I don't think it's possible to go too far by speaking truth. The truth is the truth. It is what it is. It's the reality. Are we going to defend it or are we going to conceal it? Are we going to embrace it? Are we going to hide from it? You can't have it both ways. When it comes to gender ideology, the truth is ugly. It is brutal and harsh and disgusting. I wish it wasn't that way, but it is. I didn't make it that way. I didn't create the ugliness. I'm merely pointing to it and saying, look at this. Look at it for what it is. I agree with Matt Walsh. And I want to make sure something's very clear. Tolerance, acceptance. What do those things mean? Tolerance means we may not like it. We may not want it. But we tolerate in that we are not going to freak out and we're going to go our own way and let people do their things. But that doesn't mean we have to accept it. Now, the issue is, as a society, if we move beyond tolerance into acceptance or we have people saying you must accept this, then it becomes normal to people and there is a net detriment there. My view of Dylan Mulvaney is that if we allow this narcissistic Internet influencer drama stuff to keep happening, then we are going to end up with a decaying cultural, a, de a decaying society. And we are. Dylan Mulvaney is a symptom of this problem. I think it's actually absolutely appropriate to call this out. I believe Matt Walsh is correct. There, uh, I do still maintain you can get the point across without being so mean. To clarify, you don't need to say eerie, creepy, and weird. You can be more academic in your approach. What I often say to uh, people who come on Timcast IRL, I tell them, you can insult anyone to any degree so long as you make it academic. Now, look, in reality, when people come on the show, I'm like, look, if you want to call someone, a, you know, an, an insult or whatever, go ahead and do it. We try. We try to be elevated, I suppose. But understand this. I am not saying don't insult, don't be mean, and don't call it weird or creepy. I'm saying be academic in your approach. Um, I think Matt Walsh is very much close to that position, and I completely understand why he's doing it. I don't think he's wrong. 
I think it's an issue of I don't do that. He can do that. But I agree there is a degree. Uh, there, there's a degree to which Matt Walsh is absolutely correct in his tactics. Ridicule is a powerful weapon. If people are trying to generate likes and get famous from doing something on the internet and you don't give them a negative reaction, you simply say, I, I disagree. Well, then here's what they're looking at. Massive thumbs up and neutrality. If there is no downside, there will be no reason to give up on what you're doing. Thus, I believe the appropriate response is perhaps a level of invective, perhaps a level of meanness. And I believe Matt Walsh, sir, I, I don't think Matt Walsh went too far. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I don't remember everything I said on the video that he made about it. But uh, to clarify and correct, if I did say something uh, I've later changed my mind on, my view of this is and Matt Walsh is who he is. And ridicule is a good thing and a powerful thing. And it can change people's mind, minds. My approach is simply, I'd be more academic. What I would say is, I wouldn't refer to Dylan Mulvaney as, I wouldn't say you are eerie, you are creepy, you are, you know, blah, blah, blah. I would say something more to the lines, more to the lines of, you may have people surrounding you, telling you what you want to hear, but out in the real world, you will face a very different consequence. That is, the average person will likely find something strange about you, and outside of your echo chamber, people will view you as eerie and weird, as Matt Walsh said. There's a, a video I also comment on, commented on where a trans woman, I'm sorry, a trans man says, people keep calling me a woman, but I don't think I look like a woman. I think I look like a man. I don't understand. I even chopped my tits off, the individual says. Now, my response to this video is, I don't want to be mean to somebody, you know, but I want to not give them a positive response. Perhaps we need more Matt Walsh's who are willing to give a harder negative response. I can understand that. My response is to this, this female, you go on TikTok, you are surrounded, you are love bombed by people claiming things about you that are not true. You then enter the real world where the average person tells you the truth. You are female and we can see that. The same is true for Dylan Mulvaney. That's why it's important in the digital space. You actually get some pushback. So there's a conversation being had here. But you would rather that I soften the blow a little bit, that I dress the truth up to make it prettier, more palatable. You want me to lie to protect the feelings of our enemies. No, 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 Matt Walsh. Uh, you shouldn't lump me in with anybody else who was criticizing you. The trigonometry people uh, made a statement. And let's address some of the tweets and talk about what this is. Jeremy Hambly of The Quartering. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit to make it easier to read. Responded. He said, Matt Walsh has his approach. Others have theirs. We have similar goals, but disagree on the approach. Our efforts can coexist. I am speaking to the 99% of people who are not lunatics. I don't think people who are winnable respond well to rigid language. That said, same team. It's an interesting point. In response, someone said, same team, but only one of you is doing and admitting what it takes to win. Spoiler, it's Matt. There's an interesting point there. I think Jeremy makes a good point. Um, but I don't know if saying you speak to the 99% of people who are not lunatics in any way is, is, is says anything negative about what Matt Walsh is doing. That is to say, I think Matt Walsh's approach on this one is particularly effective and probably needs to exist. It's just not something I would do. It's a diversity of tactics, I suppose. In response, Jeremy Hambly said, people saying being an insufferable a-hole is somehow the only way to win are basing this on literally zero wins. They are 100% convinced being kind has failed them, but there is no evidence being the hardcore dickwad is effective either. Jeremy's wrong in this regard. So Matt Walsh responded to the 99% statement from the quartering saying, I'm all for, for diversity of tactics, but I put my methods and success rate on this issue up against anyone. I'm not speaking in theory. I've achieved real victories with my strategy. I know how it works. Matt Walsh is correct. I'm not saying that Jeremy is wrong. I'm saying I think we all kind of agree there's a diversity of tactics, but Matt Walsh is getting clear victories. And I've got a sad and harsh reality for everybody. I've explained this over and over again. And it's why I don't think Matt Walsh is wrong to do what he does. I said, I think he get his, his point across without being so mean. That being said, he's factually correct. What I want to point out here is, and, and, and again, it, you know, I don't remember everything that I said. So let me just say this right now. If I didn't get that point across or I'm sounding different, let me just say Matt Walsh has convinced me is the easiest way to explain it. After seeing his response, thinking about it, I, I've talked about this several times in the past. 
Antifa, I, I've said this. Why is it that Twitter is willing to censor the right but not the left? Do you think Dave Rubin will lead a mob of classical liberals to Twitter HQ with crowbars, baseball bats, and Molotov cocktails and threaten the lives of Twitter employees? Well, of course not. That'll never happen. Do you think Antifa will? Well, of course. It already has happened. Not literally at like Twitter HQ, but you get my point. Thus, if the right is unwilling to be aggressive, and I'm not saying violent, violence is bad, Antifa is bad, they've hurt their own cause with that stuff. But if the right is not willing to be aggressive, there is no downside to being evil or a bad person. Thus, Matt Walsh shaming and insulting people does have an impact. Ridicule does work. Matt Walsh responded to Jeremy Hambly saying, so you'll describe me as an insufferable a-hole, but then whine when I used harsh language against trans activists. Also, if you think I have literally zero wins on this issue, you really just haven't been, you just haven't been paying attention at all. Amazingly oblivious claim. In fact, one of the most consequential things that has been done as of late is the What is a Woman documentary by Matt Walsh, which brought this into, a, into the mainstream. And now, I mean, we're seeing very positive impacts, not to mention Matt Walsh has actually got gender clinics shut down that were offering up surgeries to, to minors. Jeremy responds to Matt. You seem really sensitive about this. You've been tweeting endlessly about it, made a video about it, and now here you are again. If I had to guess, the light criticism from people who usually align with you must really be eating at you. It must ring true to you. Silly, silly drama. Uh Oh, here's my name. Matt Walsh's response. I think this is an important conversation. You tweeted for weeks and made multiple videos about your beef with Tim Pool. We have different ideas about what's important. I'm also confused how insufferable a-hole is light criticism, yet what I said about Mulvaney was too mean. Very interesting points indeed. Um, I think Matt Walsh is right, uh, and I think I can say that uh, quite simply. I don't take that approach, but that doesn't mean Matt Walsh is wrong to take his approach. The trigonometry guys basically said that what he was trying to do was get clicks and that it was ineffective and stuff like that. I, I don't agree. Matt Walsh does not come off to me like a guy who's desperate to get clicks. He's like, he's this poker faced, stern dad type figure who just says things. And there's a reason why people respond to it because he's not canning his response. That's what I see. I see somebody in Matt Walsh who says exactly what he's thinking, much to potential risk. See even people coming out and criticizing him. And he just keeps going and says, this is what I think. This is the truth. And I respect it. Let's talk about, let's get to the brass tacks here on the culture war. Colin Wright tweeted this. South Park understood the game being played long ago. This is from 2014. South Park has been very, very critical on gender ideology, mocking it relentlessly. What South Park has done with the trans community in terms of their criticism has been 100 fold more than what Matt Walsh has ever done. That being said, You can get the idea across without being so mean, but there is a space for the kind of comments. Let's be real. I'm going to be honest with you. Matt Walsh took the light approach. Simply put, I tweeted this. South Park is deeply offensive. Jason Robertson says, South Park sharing the most accurate summary of the trans movement while layering in some abortion talk. This is great. And it's a clip from the show that went viral with 7.7 million views on the tweet itself. That's my tweet, by the way, with 5,512 retweets. The video itself has 7.1 million views because there's more tweets that get views. Mr. Garrison transitions to Mrs. Garrison, realizes that they are not having a period, believes that they are pregnant and tries to get an abortion. The doctor then says to Mrs. Garrison, you are not a woman. You will never be a woman. You are a biological male who underwent surgery to appear female and you can never have children. And then the character of Mrs. Garrison, Mr. Garrison, whatever, says, oh, wow. So I'm just a man who mutilated his genitals. And he says, yes, it is as cold as cold can get. Okay, it's not as cold as cold can get, but it's very, very cold. The reason I bring this up, a conversation to be had about how you win a culture war, ridicule. South Park was 100 times meaner than Matt Walsh was, and they got the point across. They've also done the show about um, Strong Woman. That's the character's name. And um, what is it? They, they have a character 
Oh, I think strong woman is, 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 no, strong woman is the woman, is the actual female. And then you have a character who's like the undertaker who's claiming to be female and competing against women who's super ripped and like, I'm gonna destroy these women cause I'm a woman. You get the point. South Park pulls no punches. I don't see anybody coming out and saying South Park's being mean. So I don't think there's necessarily a reason for people to come out and go after Matt Walsh as being mean. And so I saw that video. I was like, oh, come on, Matt. Like, you know, my, my attitude towards Matt isn't so much about whether or not he said a mean thing. I made that point, but I was like, it was mean. It is. But I didn't say it was wrong, right? I think you're allowed to be mean. I think Matt Walsh is allowed to have his opinions. And I think you've got people sharing these videos from Colin Wright with 4,469 retweets, 1.2 million views. And this is Eric Cartman wanting to use the bathroom, but he can't because there's too many people. So he puts a bow on his hat and goes to the girl's bathroom and says, I'm transgender out of my way. And they're like, what do we do? Let me, let me, let me actually, let me, let me play this clip for you. We're going to play this one. The context here is important. Twitter kind of sucks when it loads videos, but I want to jump to the end, to the you political uh, conversation here. All I know is I'm transgender and you can't make me go to the bathroom with the cisgenders. With the what? Cisgender. It's the politically correct name for people who aren't transgender. If you identify with the sex you were born with, then you're cis. But then cisgender is just normal. Saying normal is extremely offensive to people who aren't in that group. Trust me, you don't want this hot potato. Just let him use the girls' room. But this isn't a hurting, confused child we're talking about. This is Eric Cartman. Nobody else is going to know that. You better just give him what he wants. So Eric Cartman just has us in some kind of bathroom checkmate? Actually, it's more like a royal flush. In 2014, they pointed out that there will be people who probably seek to exploit this. She says, this is not a hurt and confused child. It's Eric Cartman. For those that know the show, Eric Cartman is basically evil, who once made a kid eat his own parents. What a funny show. And he's, and Mr. Mr. Garrison, now Mr. Garrison, because he detransitioned, puts it simply, no one else will know that. Just give him what he wants. That sounds like Dylan Mulvaney to the T. No one knows the true character of Dylan Mulvaney. We're all just supposed to assume the persona on the internet is the true persona. No, I think Dylan Mulvaney is an individual who is deeply narcissistic, who mocks trans people and women for internet clicks, trying to rile up the right and the left in order to generate revenue. They got plastic surgery. And some people would say, you really think Dylan's not trans? But Dylan got plastic surgery. I mean, that proves no, it doesn't. Celebrities get weird plastic surgery all the time. Madonna did and got mocked for her appearance. What's the difference? You will make fun of Madonna. All of these people come out and say Madonna is ugly and gross and all of that stuff because of her face being all puffy and weird. And then when it comes to Dylan Mulvaney, you'll say, oh, it's great. But Matt Walsh is, is wrong for being mean. Sorry. Plastic surgery is plastic surgery and people do it for traffic. South Park nailed it. So basically what I wanted to talk about is I think Matt Walsh is, is correct. We're not going to win a culture war by ceding territory consistently. We don't have to be aggressively mean. Uh, what I mean to say is, how do we describe this? I prefer the academic approach. We want people to feel a negative consequence to doing bad things. Otherwise, they will just destroy their lives and influence others to do bad things. We don't need to uh, uh, figuratively spit on people. But I think there does need to be a certain level of invective. Now, as for Matt Walsh and South Park, I think some people are going to be very mean and they're going to call it out. It's not the approach I personally would take, but I certainly understand the importance of this diversity of tactics. It's tough, right? I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't want to be mean. I really don't. But Matt Walsh makes a good point. If we just sit back and say we're going to be nice to this, you're going to lose. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up. I don't know, 6 p.m., I guess, on this channel. We'll figure it out. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, I will see you all then.